Hi, welcome to my video about the market. Now, be an active learner. Take notes with me along the way. You'll be able to retain the information better and answer a couple of questions. Also along the way, I'll be going over these questions so you can make sure that you make notes in, the, in your notes about the questions that I'm referencing. All right, let's talk about the market. The market's made up of two different parts. And if these parts don't exist, you don't have a market. So what are these two parts? Well, I'm going to talk about them separately, and then I'd like to bring them together. The first part of a market I'm going to label as demand. Now, demand is really wherever you have what we call a consumer. A consumer is the participant in the market that consumes the product or whatever is in the market. It could be a service, by the way. Not all businesses produce products that you can tangibly touch. Some are services like online subscriptions or consulting services. So demand is anywhere where a participant is consuming a product or service, and that's called demand. Now, what is demand made up of? Because there's going to be more of it and less of it. So what are you measuring? Well, the first is, it's just the number of the consumers that you have in the market. The more consumers that want to consume a product, we use the term demand goes up. If consumers go away from the market, then we would say demand goes down. And so that is one of the factors of demand is the number of consumers. What's another factor? Another factor is taste and preferences. And what I mean by taste and preferences, I mean how many people want it. So that's wants and desires or wants and even needs sometimes. But taste and preferences is another example. How many consumers today don't know where their food comes from or don't understand the production process in agriculture. Quite a few. So when we educate our consumers, then more of them understand our production practices or the different types of products that are out there. And if we can educate consumers, then maybe we can influence taste and preferences. So if taste and preferences goes up, like for example, eggs um, are good for you in this certain way, or milk is good for you in this certain way, or beef, for example, is a good source of protein, or fish, or pork, or chicken. These are all examples of how consumers' taste and preferences are influenced. And when we can make taste and preferences go up, then we use the word demand went up. When taste and preferences go down for whatever reason, that's the same thing, demand goes down. What's another factor of demand that we need to know about? And that is going to be consumers' amount of income or how much money they have to spend. If you go into a certain sector of an economy that's booming, we would say demand goes up. Some people, some people refer to that as to pent up demand, meaning that there's demand out there because people have money and they're ready to spend it. However, if you have a situation in our economy where money falls down, then you can say demand is down because money's down. So these are just a couple of the common factors of demand, and it really relates to understanding the consumer. Now, there's lots of other parts that build us up to this, budget lines and indifference curves and alternative substitutes and complement products. All of that builds up to the idea of demand. All right, let's talk about another part of this market, and then we'll bring them together. And the other one is supply. Now, supply is really talking about somebody called a producer. So we were talking about demand as a consumer, that's the one person or one participant that has to be in the market. The other is you have to have a producer, someone that is putting the product out there. Well, what is a factor of production? Again, lots of things that build into producers. In fact, to go over those really quick, they are things about really the ability for a producer to make a profit. So if a producer can make a profit, then they can be a participant in a market. If they can't make a profit, they're not going to be in the market. Now, once we get that out of the way, lots of things that go into that, like output analysis, input analysis, and things. Once we get done with that, what affects this? Well, the number of producers would sure affect the supply. So if you have nobody or very few able to supply, then you would say supplies down. If you have the ability for lots of producers to come into the production area, for example, like you're in a city and you have this big farm to fork movement where 
where local restaurants want local sourced food products. Well, at first, maybe nobody's doing that, so it's hard to find supply. But then whenever a lot of people start doing that, local farmers markets in the area that really where those restaurants can go buy from, then you would say supply is up. That also compares to the number of consumers, so they're very similar. What's well, another parallel that's kind of close to the ability of this, and that is going to be technology. So as technology increases or decreases, actually either one, then you end up affecting supply. So for example, in a certain area, if I'm not able to produce the products because there is um, difficulty in finding land or there is difficulty in uh, getting sourced inputs to come in, but if alternative production methods come in, or if you end up with rooftop gardens in a local, in a very urban area, or you end up as a large scale farmer or rancher able to produce more efficiently, that's because of technology, then you would say supply will go up. What's another comparison? Now I'm talking about money here and I'm gonna look at just the cost of production. So as we have cost changing the money, then we end up affecting supply. So these are the common variables of, or factors I should say, of supply and demand. Now they're gonna come together to create a market and I want to give you a visual illustration of the market. So I am gonna draw a graph here and try to give myself enough room here to, to show what I want to show. Now, if you're taking notes, we've got the title of the market. You've got factors of demand, factors of supply. I would put those side by side, but come underneath that and let's draw a big graph so we can look at that. On the x-axis, we've got quantity. On the y-axis, we've got money. Really what I mean by money is price. Now, of course, down here is zero. So this would be a low price. So mark a little mark there right above zero and call that low. Come way up here to the top. And of course we would call that a high price. Now down here on the quantity, same deal. That would be a low quantity, kind of marked a little bit away from zero there. Come way over to the far right and let's put a high quantity. Now we're gonna to try to do quite a bit of work on this graph. So you may want to maybe have different colored pens or pencils. I'm gonna use different pens here, but we can draw these and maybe you just can kind of make sure you try to draw this neat. Give yourself plenty of room. All right, let's illustrate what does demand look like? Well, when it comes to demand, when you have a high price, what do you think about quantity? Well, it's probably going to be relatively low. So if I want a lot for, let's say, the best aged steak out there, it's super expensive. Uh, it's aged for 45 days in a dry process. It's gone through different stages of aging. Comes from hopefully some of the highest graded carcasses I find out there, and it's going to be a high-end product. I'm not going to sell a whole lot of that. That's just how that works. Well, what if I have a, a large production and really I'm just kind of got a bunch of steaks out there and I'm cooking these steaks and marketing it. If I have a lot lower priced product, I will sell more of it. So does everybody see the two different relationships? I got a point here and a point here. I'm going to try to draw a relatively straight line between these two, but it could be curved, but I'm going to draw a straight line and I'm going to label that demand with a zero there. Like that's the base. And so that is what demand looks like. Now, one thing we can notice about this is there is not a positive relationship between the two variables. So what does a market have for variables? It's got two things. It's got a price and a quantity. So we've talked about the factors of demand, the factors of supply. Now let's go to the market. Variables are dollars and quantity. That's typically how we illustrate it. There's other factors, but that gives us a picture. Well, what's the picture look like of demand? Is it positive or negative with price and quantity? That's the question. Is it positive or negative? The answer is it's negative. The higher price is, the lower quantity is. The lower price is, the higher quantity is. So back over underneath your demand or somewhere here by your graph, put a little asterisk here, and demand has a inverse is the word I like to put in there, or negative relationship. And that relationship is price and quantity, of course. Those are the factors. All right, so demand has a negative relationship. That's how it looks, and that's what it looks like in the marketplace. Now, it can be shaped differently. We talked about different types of demand. You could have a very flat demand. That was called 
elastic. You could have a very straight up and down demand. That's called inelastic. That's how sensitive it is between these variables. But it really doesn't matter about sensitivity. It's a negatively sloped curve every time. How it's sloped may just talk about the relationships. But the relationship is negative, and it's always going to be in that situation. Now, what about supply? It's not the same factors. It's different. Suppliers, now they're worried about these things, don't get me wrong, but these things don't affect their ability to supply. What affects them? The number of them. Technology, the cost of production. So I'm going to change colors here. And when the prices are low, producers say, yeah, I don't care about this a whole lot. I don't want to produce a lot of it. Not a lot of profit in it for me. The cost of production is probably pretty high. Um, there's not many people wanting to even do this. So this is where I'm going to be. I'm going to be low. But if you put a high price out there, then you're going to find a lot more producers that are willing to do that. So I'm going to draw a dot way out here because that's a complete different set of circumstances. These are all going to change quite a bit. Somewhere between here, when you draw a straight line, you end up with supply. And that is what we have in the market. So demand, negative relationship, supply, and we talked about this one. Let's talk about this one. This is going to be a positive relationship between price and quantity. So complete opposite. So it's kind of funny to think about a market because you got to have two people or two players or two areas that have to come together and create a market. And these folks could not think a whole lot differently, more differently than these folks. Suppliers, whoops, suppliers are after making profit, having an effective cost of production that they can manage and deal with, technology they can utilize to help them, and you're going to end up with a number of these coming into play when all those line up. And then demand, they're not worried about really the cost, and they're not really worried about how many are out there. They just want it, and they want it based on these factors. Well, when all this comes together, I am going to go back to my original color here. We have what we call a market. So this is the quantity that would clear the market. I'll put a little market there with it. And this is the price that the market will pay. And so these are how these things come to play. So what does it take? Go back over a few of these. What are the factors of demand? That's a question. What are the factors of supply? That's a question. What are the parts of the market that must be in that supply and demand. They come together and create a market. Inside of a market, you've got factors that affect it, and it's illustrated by usually a price and a quantity. And then when these two things come together, they create what we call equilibrium. Now, the last part of my video here is, can these lines change? Absolutely. So you could have a situation where demand changes. Let's just say the number of, let's say taste and preferences goes way down for some reason in our product. Or taste and preferences goes way up in our market. Or money goes way up. Or money goes way down. These things are the number of consumers that can even get to the market goes way down. Or the number of consumers goes way up. These things are all happening today in our in our markets right now. So what happens when demand changes? Let me do an illustration. If demand goes up, so numbers of consumers, taste and preferences, the shift will always be to the right. And I'm going to put a demand one. I'm going to draw the slope the same. I just pushed it out. Well, without drawing any more on my graph, just looking at this, you can see the equilibrium is now higher and the quantity is higher. So demand of consumers goes up. That's a good thing in the market if you want prices to go up, and that's what a producer wants. So they need to be benefited. They can benefit themselves by changing the production process, but they really need to get consumers to want to buy more. And demand going up is the way they get that done. You get a higher price and you get to sell more quantity. That's better bottom line for your business. Now, what about if demand goes down? Well, let's draw another line. So I'm going to draw a little shift here to the right on my graph, and I'm going to try to put increase, because to the right is always an increase. 
Now to the left would be a decrease. So I'm going to put in D and I'm going to put a negative one showing it went down and I'm going to put a little arrow here for decrease so I can follow that. And that's easy to see. I'm not going to add more lines to it, but you can see prices have dropped and quantity in the market has dropped. So these things are what create changes in the market. Move out of the way a little bit. All right, what about from a supply standpoint? Same thing can happen. I can look at this original D here and see what happens when more producers come in. Technology lets me produce more. Cost of production goes down, so I'm able to produce more. Positive relationship. Same thing, though. You're going to have a shift to the right. So I'm going to draw a line here to the right. I'm going to call that S1. I'm going to draw a little increase again. But it doesn't matter. It's a shift to the right. It's always an increase. What happens? Well, you see now prices drop, but I'm selling more. So if suppliers push more out into the marketplace, they're going to drive price down. But it is going to push quantity out. So the question is, are they better off or not? It really depends on the cost. But that's a good example of what happens when more producers come in. As a production person myself, I don't want to see a lot more supply come into the market. I'd rather have demand side value. But that's not always what you have. Sometimes you have supply side value and that's the result. What happens if supply backs off? So we get supply with a negative one. Same deal. That's going to be a decrease and that's going to have the situation where you have less product out there, but a higher price. So what is the market made up of? Demand and supply. The factors relate to those important. What are the factors of the market? Once you have them plugged in, demand and supply, it's a price and a quantity relationship we can share. And then demand and supply come together and they create a market. Our equilibrium price, equilibrium quantity. Now, can those change? Absolutely. Change any of these factors? You move the lines around. To the right is always an increase. To the left is always a decrease as far as an illustration. Supply, same way. All right, hopefully this video helps you better understand the market and better understand the factors of demand and supply. Thanks.